Hi, everyone. I just want to let you know that we have started recording our session. We're going to start in just a few seconds, but we are recording for Your Benefits Engaged 2022 Open Switch Enrollment, How to Do Open Enrollment Online. And now that it is just now 3.30, I think I'll go ahead and do introductions. <laughs> My name is Becky McGregor, and I am your APS Employee Wellness Coordinator. Joining me is Kelly Murphy from our HR Operations Department, Andrea Biggs, one of our Benefit Specialists, and Rebecca Wheat, another one of our Benefit Specialists. Andrea is going to be walking us through this process with help from Kelly. Um, Kelly Murphy is going to be navigating some of the um, Joe Sample open enrollment information. I just want to give you guys a couple of reminders here. Please make sure your phones and computers are muted. Turn off your camera if you can. Until we get to the Q&A, we are going to have a question and answer session, so don't worry about that. You can put your questions in the chat box. Um, we will make a note. We, can, we might either address it in the chat as we're going or just address it as a group um, at the end of the presentation. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Andrea. She's just going to start filling you in. Andrea? Thank you, Becky. Again, my name is Andrea Marie Biggs. Um, I am one of the benefits specialists down here in the benefits department. So you should have received your email um, earlier today. They started going out today. If you haven't gotten it yet, uh, hopefully they'll trickle in and you will see it soon. Those emails will be coming from the HR at um, APS.edu. So be looking out for that email. If for some reason you don't see it in your inbox, please check your junk or spam email boxes. I have heard a couple of people say that it did go there already. So just be looking out for that. And so this is what it's going to look like, the email itself. And it is titled 2020 uh, Benefits Open Enrollment Forms Assigned. So you'll, it's very clearly titled. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> so this is what a sample email is going to look like. It's going to have in many different spots the links to be able to get to your vernacular workspace login. This is where you're going to go to take a look and review your 2022 or 2021 benefits statement. So it's everything you're enrolled in currently. Okay. Just so that you guys know, this is where you go. Um, Winocular Workspace is where you guys go when you apply for positions as well as signing your contracts. I know we get a lot of those questions on what is Winocular. So oh, this link will take you right there. We want to make note that there were significant plan design changes as well as premium increases to your medical plan for 2022. Um, most of the plan changes did go into effect for 2021, but of course many people are just barely realizing that. So please go out there, take a look at that and realize as well as that medical benefit premiums will be increasing this next year as well. Uh, we have hosted many webinars on um, each of the plans, or one webinar per plan, but they were done all last week. You can go out to the APS YouTube channel, expect great things to watch those webinars. All plan summaries, comparison charts, as well as what your payroll deduction rate sheets are available out on our website at aps.edu, human resources, benefits pages, as well as the intranet. So once you hit one of those links, um, they can either the click here or the it has the full link 
of that. If you hit any of them, you're going to land up going to, next slide, please. To the login screen for Winocular. Um, again, and you're going to key in your employee number. It is with the E, E in front of it, and then your employee number to get you to this. Next page. So off to the right side, you will see smart forms. And right under that is where it says open enrollment. You'll go ahead and you'll click on the open enrollment. And then you will see where it says benefits statement. So you'll go ahead and you'll click on the benefit statement. Next page. Sorry, it's not it's not changing. <laughs> Remember <laughs> having this problem with my computer. Not a problem. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so once you see your benefit statement, there's going to be a few different sections. And in each section, there's going to be radio buttons. And in each section, you must pick one or the other. So the top one is going to show you what benefits you are enrolled in as far as medical, dental, vision, whether it's single, it's double, or it's family. And you're going to then say, I would like to make changes or I would not, I don't need to make changes at this time. And then you go down to the next section and the next section is for the additional life insurance. This is not the basic life insurance, $10,000 that we all give you, but it's for the additional that you pay for on top of that. And so this is going to show you what you have. During open and run, enrollment as well as the whole month of October, we do not allow you to sign up or to go through the EOI process for additional life insurance. The only change we allow you to make during this time is to add children if you already have additional life. So just because you have the basic, please don't think that you can then add the children you do have to have that additional life insurance already in place to add the children. Next slide. The final one on your benefit statement is going to be the ASI Flex. Just a friendly reminder that every year you must re-enroll in ASI Flex. So just because it shows here that you have a pay period contribution of $25, that will not roll over into the new year. You will need to re-enroll for that same $25 or however much you want, but for the following year. So it won't go with you the next year. You are then going to sign it and complete it, and it will take you back to that front page once you hit complete. So if you had selected any of the radio buttons to make changes, you're going to now see the forms of which you had wanted it to make those changes on. And I'm going to just also tell you that if for some reason we send it back to you, you're going to see on this same page right here, right next to those, what the problem was. So, so that you know that this front page is, is where all of the information to start drilling down to do what you need to do. Please remember again that you are only enrolling a child for additional life insurance. And it is only if you are already established and have additional life insurance. So if you selected that form, that form will be here for you to fill out. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead and go to the next page. 
Okay, and I just want to highlight one of the things. You know when you complete the form, because you'll have a green check, and it'll say ready to flow. Just so that's your other little indicator that you know you completed it appropriately. Sorry, thank you. And then, Andrea, on the live demo, are you going to go over the attachment upload documents part? Yes. Okay, so now we're going to sit... I'm going to unshare. We're going to throw the screen over, screen controls, to Kelly, who hopefully is not having computer difficulties. How's it going, Kelly? I'm okay. Bringing it up. Okay. The new benefits. Oh, go ahead, Andrea. Do you want to answer her question? <laughs> sure. So, open enrollment. Everything that you enroll in during open enrollment is for an effective date of one one, twenty twenty two. So, if you have a qualifying event and you have something that you need to to get beforehand, please get in touch with us. But all of these are effective one one of 2022. Are you seeing my screen? No, we are not. Oh. Becky, this is Ann Johnson. I would just like to quickly add something. I noticed in the um, on the page with the flexible spending accounts, so the ASI Flex, that it actually said on that page, do you want to enroll for flexible spending account for 2021? That is a typo. I don't know if that was just on our presentation or if it's also on the actual form, but you would be enrolling for 2022. So we apologize for, for that, but just wanted to clarify. Sorry, Anne. Um I think you came in a little late. We did talk about that, that some of the screen oh, okay. were from last year. And so they okay. did have um, the 2021 instead of just the screenshots. Um, okay, wonderful. wonderful. Okay, thank you. Nope, thank you. It gets confusing because what you're doing now in 2021 is actually for 2022. So we get, we get confused with that <laughs> a lot. <laughs> And Anne made note that because we have calendar years, we have school years, and we have fiscal years, it's all different. So go ahead, Kelly. Okay, okay. so Andrea, I'm I'm where you need to be now. Um, yes, thank you. I have signed into my account. We had technical technical difficulties with Joe Sample, so I hadn't submitted mine. So we're going to work off of mine. So it's not any different, but just wanted to let you know. Okay, sounds good. So go ahead and click on the uh, right under that smart forms where it says open enrollment. And as mentioned, you're going to have this front page that is only going to have the benefit statement for right now. So you're going to go ahead and click on the benefit statement. And again, this is going to explain to you that it is for what you are currently enrolled in now as of the 5th of October, 2021, and that any changes it does state in there are effective January 1st of 2022, right above that. So then in looking at this, the first part is your benefit elections for your PIPP. Um, then if you have medical, dental, or vision, if you have it single, double, or family, and how much your premiums are as of today, please remember again that medical premiums will be going up in the new year. So at this point, you then are going to say right below it that you would like to make a change or you would not make a change. You will not make a change. Uh, Kelly, if you don't mind, can we go ahead and say we are going to make a change today? Thank you. And then you're going to scroll down and it's going to talk about your life 
and long-term disability insurance elections. Again, this is going to show you that you do have of your basic life insurance that is no cost to the employee. Plus, if you have the voluntary supplemental life insurance, which is considered the additional life insurance and how much you have. And it's in this section, if you have a dollar amount there, that you can then elect to add your children onto it. And Kelly, I know that you already do, but can we go ahead for this exercise and say that you do want to add it, add your children? And again, I want to point out that on that radio button, it does say that you are already enrolled in the vol voluntary supplemental additional life insurance and that you are aware of that. And that is why you are only adding your children onto that. Below that is going to be for the ASI Flex and whether or not you are enrolled in that. Again, please, I want to reiterate that you must re-enroll every single year. So even if there was a pay period contribution amount there that will not roll over until next year, you will need to re-sign up for that. Once you hit that, I would like to, you will get an email instantly showing you the directions on what to do with our third party and where to go to sign up for that. So today we won't go into that. Kelly, you could go ahead and say you don't want to. Below that is going to be what your voluntary retirement savings plans are. You cannot make changes on this. We just want to put it out there on what you have. Any place on this statement that has the little red arrow that is required for you to, to have some type of thing in it. So you cannot hit complete without say your signature on there. Once you hit complete, it'll will automatically take you back to that front screen. And now you have more forms that you originally did not have. So let's go into the enrollment change form. If everyone, when they do get this, please take the time to read through everything um, as you are making those changes. So if you are that top section where it says type of action, are you enrolling or making a change? Are you canceling coverage? Are you adding dependents? Are you canceling dependents? That type of thing. The switch carrier plan is if you are going say from Presbyterian to Cigna or one of the other ones as well as dental. So if you are going from a basic plan to a comprehensive plan, you are going to put that in that little radio button where it says switch carrier plan you're going to hit that and then put those comments in there right below it you see where it says medical dental vision and the uh, pre-tax insurance premium you do need to hit some form of radio button on this if you are already signed up for any of the plans and you do not plan to make any changes, that's when you're going to say, say no change. If you are looking to cancel coverage that you already have, you will then hit the waive coverage to cancel that coverage. If you are making any other types of changes, such as adding on a dependent, taking off a dependent, or changing your plans, you will then need to select what plan you want and then what you will be going to. So let's say that you have you, your spouse and a child and you're removing your child, you still have to select the plan you have and then you're saying you're going down to double because it's gonna be you and your spouse still on there. If please also take a look under the dental and the vision, the notes there do state that you do have a lock in period of two years. So if you had 
gotten onto a dental or vision plan starting on 1-1 of 2020 or prior to that, then you can make changes. But if you had gotten onto dental or vision plans anytime after that 1-1 of 2020, you will not be able to make those changes at this time. Also, right, before, Kelly, if you don't mind, can you scroll up just a tad? Okay, so now we're in the section of the dependents and who you are adding or removing. Right above that, it does state in there that if you are adding a spouse, we need a marriage certificate. And if you are adding on any children, we need birth certificates. I will show you in a little bit on where to go to upload those with these, but please keep in mind that we do need those when you are enrolling them. And when we say marriage certificates, please do not include the marriage license. In the state of New Mexico, on one side it's the license, the other side is certificate. We do need the certificate side. Some of the other states have it both on the same page, which is fine. Again, down here, you will need to add everybody's information in there, their date of birth, their social security number, and then you are going to say if you are adding medical and then you don't hit just the medical, you're going to hit add or medical and remove. What exactly are you doing with medical? So please don't just check mark the medical, but tell us add or remove on each person that you are adding down here. If we can go ahead and scroll down just a tad. You then are going to go ahead and sign. Kelly, I don't know that it's gonna let you do complete without filling out the top portions if you want to. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and it'll take you back out to this front part. If we can go ahead and go to that additional life insurance. As we have mentioned a few times already, that at this time you can only add children if you have additional life insurance. So this form will only allow you at this time to select add child life in the change and then below in the plan one and plan two to put your children's names. Now, please keep in mind that if you select plan two, you must also select plan one. But if you want plan one, you still add your children down below. You do not need to add a beneficiary down here when it's your children because you are automatically eat the child's beneficiary if something were to happen. And then you would go ahead, you would sign it and then complete it. So now you, let's say you have added a dependent, whether it is a spouse or a child. Right below there where Kelly has the cursor, it says attach upload document. You must select the document type. So go ahead and select that. And then you can do marriage birth certificates at this time. You then go and find it where you have it. We do allow you to take a picture off of your smartphone to upload it. It does not have to be PDF. So it will attach that to it. You can also make notes on what is it. If you are adding five different birth certificates, it may be helpful to put list whose is what on there or if it's the marriage certificate. And then you're going to hit upload. Now, once you have everything uploaded, and you'll have to do that with a, each document, each time that you are sitting there and you are uploading it, it in. So once you do all of that, you will need to hit submit forms to benefits in order for it to flow to us. If you stop right here and you forget to hit that submit forms to benefits, we will never see it and you will not be enrolled 
until that comes to us. Okay. And what would happen, Andrea, if they didn't notice that until after the benefits, after the open enrollment window? So they are going to need to, um, unfortunately, we do have our window is, um, is from our open enrollment is October 6th through the 15th. Um, unfortunately, if you don't get it in on time, uh, you aren't able to get enrolled. However, if something does come up, contact us first um, before assuming that. So please just be really mindful about that submit forms to benefits button. <laughs> we would hate for any um, anybody to not get enrolled because of that one little detail. I'm going to try to share my screen again. I really think my laptop has gone, um, is dying a very slow death. So I apologize, everybody, for that. Because it's just, um, it's in my. Oh dear. And then, um, Andrea, you have the presentation. Can you pull it up and share it on your computer? Let me see. I know you guys hear all that clicking. That is my um, tab not working. <laughs> Let me see. Um. So Bernadette. Sorry, I'm working off of my iPad and of course I can't find it in my email there. Oh, it's on. It's in Google. Um, that's okay. Let me. Um, I'm just going to give everybody some reminders. Um, I know we have a couple of questions, so I want to make sure we can address those for everyone. Um, Lisa had dental work to do this month. Should I cancel it for the beginning of the year when I have a policy that will cover it? Um, Okay, so Rebecca, you've taken care of Lisa's question. Thank you for that. And then Bernadette, you said you're making sure the forms you need are on the wellness page. So what forms, and you can unmute if you need, but are, are you talking about the open enrollment forms? Or are you talking about the domestic partner forms? I'm not really sure what you're referring to. The domestic partner affidavit and whatever three documents are required to upload. And that was, um, I think Rebecca gave you the where to find that document on the APS.edu um, human resource benefit page. So you'll find that. And again, my computer is, um, I'm going to give you that um, link here. So um, you can find, find oh. that. Here we go. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, you can find that form, the affidavit, that affidavit, which also gives you that list of the other supporting documentation that you need. So Bernadette, you will need to have three supporting documents. It has to be documents that have both you and your domestic partner listed on that. And one of those has to date back one year. All of those forms are, uh, what, what forms are acceptable? are is in within that APS domestic partner policy. So you'll see it once you open it up and you print it, or when you look at it, you'll see the, the, the approved document. As well as the affidavit needs to be notarized prior to you uploading it. 
Are there any other questions for these benefit specialists? Yes, this is Diana Boyd. Hi. Hey, Becky. Nice to see a picture of you. <laughs> um, so I don't know how you got that one form. So I just want to see, I, I talked to you about, I'm going to disenroll from the medical benefits and my husband's picking everything else up uh -huh. for transferring. So I didn't, I couldn't see that one form. So do I click, I would like to make changes on APS benefit elections. I say, I want to make changes. And then I not change it. So I say, I'm already enrolled for voluntary, leave that. And then I have to click or... Uh, I would already like, to, I'd like to re-enroll on the flex. I leave that. And then will I get that other form for the changes or? Yes. So you have to hit complete. So when you, when you first go in there, you only have the benefit statement and only the radio tabs that you, cl you click on that say you want to make changes. Will those forms come to okay, you? So I have to do all of it. So the first one, I just said, I would like to make changes. And then the rest I'm leaving. I'm like, I'm already enrolled. I'd like to re-enroll and then I sign and complete. Is that correct? You want to re-enroll or you want to drop yourself because you are going to be added to your. Okay. Well, that's, um see that's why i'm that's, asking that's it's very so, confusing so diana um we will we actually will be having um at the wellness fair this come thursday from 8 to 3 30 at bernafacio professional complex we will have computers there and a specialist will be there to help anybody out with the form. I think that if you're really needing us to walk you through and handhold to to help you fill out this paperwork, that you go to that day and we can help you fill it out. As in like two days from now? Yes, ma'am. Mm. So Diana, it's hard because I have company coming in. I mean, so I, um, we have some screenshots. I think it's it's just that there's a two part process. You're going to go through your benefit statement and collect that you do want to make a change. Okay. Then it takes you once you hit complete, it takes you back to that dashboard and it yeah. fills in the form. Yeah. That and so you'll click that and then you'll go through that to make your change. You will you will actually click that you are disenrolling. Okay. You're going to say wave coverage. Wave coverage. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> so, that, so it's a so there's two actually two forms that you'll that you'll navigate through to take yourself off. And okay. Um, is it going to be any other day? Like, I have a household of company coming in that. Day. Well, how about this? Once we wrap this presentation up, why don't we just, if you hang on the call for just a few minutes and after we record, we can talk you through this a little bit more. Great. That would be good. And I Lisa, I can do it. It's just obviously overwhelming. And okay. That's, that's okay. Don't worry about it. All right. Thank you. I will yeah. wait. Thank you. Lisa has a question. Go ahead, Lisa. So I'm an APS employee already, and I have the basic dental plan. Um, however, I had a tooth removed, and I have an implant. They scheduled it for October 14th, and I don't have the comprehensive plan to actually pay for it. Um, so I wanted to change my enrollment to the more comprehensive plan so that they would cover the implant as well as the... Um, or that tooth that is put on there. And Lisa. So, so. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Lisa, Lisa. What you're going to need to do is you're going to, okay. first need to check. Sorry. You're first going to need to check and see if you, um, if you've been on the, have you been on the basic for at least two years? So you were enrolled in at least one, one of 2020 or earlier. Yes, I've been in it for 20 years. Okay, so then you would be able to make those changes from basic to comprehensive. However, they will not go into effect until January 1st of 2022. So if okay. you have it coming up, even if you made these changes now, you will not be able to get covered 
urge uh, the comprehensive coverage now for this service, unless you were to cancel it and wait until next year. Okay, perfect. And do you know about how much would it go up? Um, those, the, those rates are out on our website. Okay. Thank you. And then Christina Leonard has a question. Um, do I have to upload documents to my spouse and children if I'm not changing them, but changing the medical plan? Right. That's my question. So I'm not, I'm not like enrolling extra dependents or anything like that. I just want to switch medical plans. So they're already covered and you're just switching Then No, you do not need to have that, um, to upload that documentation. Oh, okay. Again. So, um, I was, I was, um, looking at the winocular and it has the, it has the place where you have to write down the spouse's name and all of that stuff. Do I just put the names in? We would need you. Okay, to fill so out I that I just put their names that. in, but I don't have to upload all of the marriage certificate and birth certificates. Okay, thank you. Correct. That's a great question. Thank you. Does anybody else have a question? I know it's okay if you have them. <laughs> Andrea, did you have something else you wanted to add? I think I am good. I'm just going to go over a couple of closing reminders before I stop recording. Um, we do have insurance company specific information sessions on our APS employee wellness YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and just type that search in, you'll, you'll get the APS employee wellness YouTube channel. That link is also scattered throughout our website. And on Thursday, October 7th from eight to three 30, we are having our APS employee wellness fair. As Andrea mentioned earlier, there is going to be assistance with online open enrollment if you felt like this webinar didn't address all your needs. We also, also have a vaccination clinic, and we are going to have the COVID vaccines as well as the Pfizer booster, but we just have to give you this reminder. You do need to bring your vaccination card with you and also bring your um you know, your insurance card. We do have consent forms, again, on our APS EU, human resource benefits site. When you click on open enrollment, there is a vaccination page that gives you all of the information you need for the vaccinations um, and consent forms to fill out beforehand. That does expedite the process if you fill out the consent form. And we are offering mammograms, a blood donor drive. We have a ton of community vendors coming. It's all very socially distanced, um, but we have a lot of fun wellness activities going on. We will also have your medical and non-medical carriers there so that you can talk to some of the different vendors that we have um, that we provide under the APS benefit umbrella. We're having fitness demos. There's a lot of great, great stuff going on and a ton of raffle prizes. If I just want to put that out there, Christina, you have a question. I'm sorry. One more. <laughs> so I I'm, looking at the page where you add in the names of the dependents, and then it says mark type of coverage and, and um, action. So there's a place for medical, add or remove. It's, it's just medical switch. So am I adding them or? You can go ahead and say add for this purpose. Okay. Um, and then for dental, I'm not changing it or vision, I'm not changing it. Do I? So you wouldn't even select those two. Okay, so for and medical, up above, you're going to say same, no change. Okay, and I did do that. So medical add. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. No, no problem. So um, I can see you're kind of working through that process through the webinar. This is a very smart idea. So um, we, this is your benefits engaged at at APS Employee Benefits, we really do want you to engage with us. And one of the ways to do that is to connect in one of these forums. We've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We also have monthly wellness newsletters. We put things out every other week in the perspective. Uh, we have a wellness event calendar, as you know, because you accessed this webinar through that. We also have an APS intranet page um, under employee resources, employee wellness. It's chocked full of different wellness and benefit resources for you. 
And then, of course, for all things benefits and open enrollment, you can access APS.edu human resource benefits. And there's um, it's pretty well lined out there for you. Uh, different questions you might have. You can also contact your benefit specialist through that page. So that's all the ways you can connect and engage. And we do encourage you to do that. Share this information with your colleagues. We appreciate that. And um, take care of your health. We appreciate what you do for our district. And I want to thank you all for joining us for this information session. Again, it is recorded. And it will be on the APS Employee Wellness YouTube channel. Once again, there's an email and the main benefits page on this screen. I'm going to stop recording. Again, thank you all. Have a wonderful day. I hope to see you Thursday at the Wellness Fair. And with that, I'm going to hope to stop recording. Are you okay, Becky? Well, it's not stopping because, <laughs> again, I can't seem to get that to register. We did want to go ahead and make sure we got Diana's questions answered, so I really want to be able to get this off. Ah.